Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Salar Khan YouTube channel where we continue the discussion from the previous video. So in the previous one, we, we basically try to understand the different types of generation of electrical power. A general topic, you know, just you, you could even call it a wastage of time at this level. Anyways, so today we see the basic terms, some basic uh, uh, definitions that we'll be using throughout the course. Okay, so let's get into it. Connected load, maximum demand, you would have seen it from the title of the video. Anyways, before that, if we talk about the overall, you know, a picture of the of the power system. So what, what would it be? It would be that it would consist of a generation end or I would say we have a generator over here and it would be connecting it to the load. So at, at one end you have the generator, at the other end you have the load, right? Yes. Now you know what this would be? The generator would be a synchronous machine. This could be a synchronous machine, would be operating at a fixed speed. The revolution speed would be fixed. Why is this fixed? To, to, to give you the output at a constant frequency, right? Yes. So this has a fixed speed. Why? Because this is a a fixed frequency machine the generating end is connected to the load end through what through a transmission line through a transmission line and now the rest you know medium transmission line short transmission line long transmission line depending on the voltage levels generation is at a lower voltage most mostly 11 kV stepped up in between in between these two you would have a transformer what is a transformer so the transformer is used to do what to change the voltage level it plays around with the voltage levels at what at a constant power changes voltage levels at what at constant powers right and it has a pro it has a property of what uh, it has a property of isolation what is that property it forms a link between two circuits magnetically it forms a link between two circuits magnetically okay not electrically so this is the property of isolation of the transformer right yes sir transmission line the the ones that are used are acsr transmission lines acsr aluminum conductor with steel reinforced steel provides the 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 the, the, the mechanical strength aluminum provides the good conductivity why not copper why not other ones not a part of this discussion anyways coming to the load end we see about the basic terms now the first thing that i should say is the connected load now what is the connected load so this is represented by a pt connected load is the sum of all the ratings of the equipment that is connected being used not used doesn't matter it is there in the system it is connected to the system it is the connected load so if i write this would be the sum of continuous rating of equipment connected for instance for instance if I say so you have two lights over here and two are the four lights five lights five are the total number of lights and two are the fans so the fans are off at this stage but still they are in the connected load why because they are connected in the system yes yes this is denoted by a PT the next is the maximum demand the next would be the maximum demand what is the maximum demand it is the maximum load on the system at any instant of time right yes denoted denoted by what denoted by a pm this is the maximum load on a system at an instant of time yes yes what is next let me see over here connected load and then i i told you about the rating over here so you may get confused between the rating and the capacity of a of an equipment kva the real power the apparent power kilowatts the real power don't confuse it at this stage when we study the power factor we'll see that over there for now kilowatts are enough right yes maximum demand is 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 it could either be on the daily basis or monthly basis or annual basis it could not be on 
uh, weekly basis is not considered now in the maximum demand you have two cases the first is the coincident maximum demand and the second is the non coincident coincident is also called simultaneous now what happens in the coincident is that the maximum demand of a number of consumers lie at the same in instant of time for instance my maximum demand is lying at 6 pm and in the, the neighbors maximum demand is also lying at 6 pm so this is a coincident maximum demand both are occurring at the same time whereas for non coincident my maximum demand would occur at 6 pm the others would occur at 10 pm the others would occur at 11 in the am so that is a different time for different maximum demands of different consumers maybe the same class maybe another class now what is a class so that might be industrial and this and that we'll get to that for, for now you have a number of consumers so this is coincident and non coincident maximum demands the other would be what the other would be uh, the, the the what the next is the demand factor demand factor is represented by FD the third is the demand factor this is represented by F D what is the demand factor it is the ratio of the maximum demand to the connected load connected load is what it's PT so it's the ratio of the maximum demand to the connected load yes yes now this ratio will always be less than one now why would this be less than one because or at most this could be equal to one at most this could be equal to one why because for instance my maximum demand is what uh, i told you uh, the connected load that this is five uh, uh, lights and two fans this is my connected load but normally normally i am using two two lights but as now i need most lightning so i'm using five of them so five of them is my maximum demand at this stage this is my maximum demand still still the two fans are off which means that still the maximum demand is less than the connected load the total load but if at the maximum what could i do i could turn on the entire load which means i could uh, put on the fans as well so what would happen that the entire load is on which means the maximum demand would become equal to the connected load the the, 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 the demand factor would reach its maximum value that is one now I don't have any other thing to turn on so which means I could not put on more load so the demand factor could not go beyond one yes yes and you have uh, you have another definition of average load number four would be the average load this would be the energy units consumed over the time that is average load or average demand is the kilowatt rating of the number of equipment used by a consumer during a specified period right yes dividing the energy units by the number of hours so if p is representing my average load this would be the energy units e divided by the time t in which they are considered yes yes I'll have a number of examples on this one I'll have a number of examples before that the final definition for this video would be that of a load factor this would be now important load factor this is represented by FLD and FLD is the the, the ratio of the average load to the maximum demand this is the ratio of the average load to the maximum demand yes yes now what does this say the ratio of the average load to the maximum demand is the load factor right is usually expressed as a percentage this is important for power supply companies and this is also important in determining the capacity of the, the installed capacity of the plant right yes a low load factor indicates what uneven usage of electricity because you are not using it evenly right this low load factor low load factor is low your usage is not even 
yes you should have a high load factor a high load factor is good and one other thing for a high load factor would be the cost of the electricity would be cheaper for a high load factor how would that be we'll see that in the upcoming videos but you just need to have it in your mind yes yes now what can i do is if i multiply both by 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 the time if i if i multiply and divide by time P average load time T will it not give me the number of units consumed it will give me which implies that the load factor FLD would be the number of units E divided by the maximum demand into time or another definition could be that the number of units generated divided by the maximum number of units that it could have generated in that time yes yes these are the average units and these are the maximum units depending on the maximum power yes yes sir so what do you have i say i just stop it over here we'll see the next in the next videos but before that i will go uh, with a with a number of examples that are written over here just small examples just small examples and for instance a typical load of a residential consumer is given consider this table considering the table you have a light or I do not need to write that I do not need to write that so let's say if I'm talking about the connected loads so what do I have is I have lights if 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 I have uh, 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 10 lights and each is a hundred watts each is a hundred watts for instance so so which means the total watts of light that I have is 1000 watts or I could say a one kilowatt Similarly, I could have fan. A fan is what? Now, fan would be 150 maybe. Fan would be 150. Where is it? Yes, there's 110. So, let's say I have 5 lights and I have multiplied with 110. Now, what does this give? Uh, 110. So, uh, this would be 650, I believe. Just check it out, whatever it is. So you've got a number of fans. Let's say you've got a PC, one PC, let's say 150 watts. Uh, you have a, 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 what? A refrigerator, maybe 150 watts again. Uh, and then you have an electric iron, which would be a one kilowatt, uh, 1000 watts. Then you have a, a, a water for a pump for uh, what? Motor for pumping water. So that would be one horsepower about 670. Let's say make it a 700 watts. So the thing is the connected load. This is the connected load. You sum the total. You sum the total. The total would be what? That would be your entire load connected. Yes. So do that. Do this for your home, right? That find out the entire connected load of your home. The number of fans, the number of lights, refrigerators, PCs, water pumps, electric irons, microwave ovens. Whatever is it, the sum of all would be what? Would be your connected load. Yes, yes. Next, if I talk about the maximum demand. So maximum demand would depend upon the usage. Now, for instance, over here, I'm given a table. Let's say I am given like this, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, whatever it is so the usage over here is 500 500 these are lights then i have fans then i have a latte machine now this is a, a workshop okay then i have a milling machine then i have an air compressor fine so this is 500 this is 200 these are not being used at this time air compressor is 7.46 kilowatts 10 to 11 500 200 7.46 kilowatts 0 0 500 200 0 11.2 kilowatts 0 500 200 these are watts 7.46 0 7.46 kilowatts 500 300 0 600 300 
0.007.46 kilowatts. This is given, a load pattern is given, you could say, where what is happening, it is showing you the, the load pattern of that consumer. How is he using his electricity? So for the first hour, that is 9 to 10, his, he is using his lights for which he is consuming 500 watts. He is using fan for which he is consuming a 200 watts and he is using an AC where he is consuming 7.46 of kilowatts. So which means the total that he is consuming is what? The total that he is consuming in this particular time is 8.16 kilowatts. 8.16 kilowatts during 10 to 11 I'm writing it from here it's 8.16 again to 11 to 12 is 11.9 15.62 0.8 wait uh, 8.16 8.16 11.9 15.62 0.8 19.56 and I also have one other 3 to 4 that I missed over here. 600, 300, 0, 0, 7.46. I may have made a mistake somewhere although. 300, uh, 7.46, 11.2, uh, 600, 300. 7.46 11.2 this one is 0 and this is over here 7.46 so this comes out to be 8.36 now from here what can you see what can you see from here from here you can see that the maximum demand the maximum demand of the consumer is what? The maximum demand, you could see that the maximum electrical power he is consuming during a specified period of time. For us in this video, that over here in this example, the specified period of time is one hour. So in that one hour, the maximum that he is using. So PM over here is this thing, 19.56 kilowatts, right? Yes. Connected load, connected load, you can also find from this, you could say, you can say that he is using a maximum of 600 over here. So you can say that these are considering them to be the, the overall that they, he has, he has turned them on. So 600, then go for 300, the maximum over here, 7.46 and 11.2 and 7.46 add them all together you have a 27.02 kilowatts 27.02 kilowatts go for the maximum value right yes you also have another term that is a station maximum demand so that is basically for the generating end right for instance for instance you have a 90 megawatts of load you have what a 90 megawatts of load and then at the generating end you have a plant which have which consists of four units each of 100 megawatts so to feed that load of maximum of 90 megawatts you only need to turn on one uh, unit of the plant 100 megawatts right yes so what would you say that the uh, that the load side maximum demand is what 90 megawatts over here you are turning on the maximum of 100 megawatts so the generating end side maximum demand is 100 megawatts right yes example a consumer has a maximum demand maximum power demand at a particular time of 30 kilowatts maximum demand is 30 kilowatts having equipment with an installed capacity of 65 kilowatts if you are given the installed capacity load factor is not given take it to the to the connected load calculate his demand factor demand factor is unknown so demand factor is what 
it's the maximum demand over this so 30 upon 65 30 upon 65 kilo kilo would cancel out fd would come out to be 0 0.46 or 46 percent yes yes now the average load the number of units consumed can be obtained from the energy meter installed at the consumer's premises for instance for a for example a consumer consumes 12 units in a day if i have 12 units in a day in a day so what do i mean by this that this is e the energy unit are 12 12 and the unit for this is kilowatt hours so 12 kilowatt hours I have in a day. So in a day means that the time I would be specifying in number of hours is 24 hours. So this implies that now I am asked to find the average power. I'm fine to I might to find the average load. So the daily average load. So my daily average load would be what p is equal to e upon t so this would be 12 upon 24 and this would be 1 over 2 right 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 kilowatts 0 0.5 kilowatts is my average load yes yes so i hope that this is clear i hope that this is clear do you want me to have one other or should we move to the next video? Let's say I have one other. A residential consumer, where will I write? Okay, I will write it somewhere. A residential consumer has a maximum demand of, so let's say this was my example number one. Uh, this one is my example number two. This one is three. This one is four. Let's say I write my fifth over here. A residential consumer has a maximum demand of 10 kilowatts so PM is 10 kilowatts and the energy meter indicates 1850 units at the end of a month so the energy units are 1850 kilowatt hour and you are given that this is in the in a month right so find the load factor find the load factor FLD so FLD is what you have the formula E divided by PM into T. Put the values please. Uh, FLD would be E 1850 divided by PM 10 into T is a month. So in the month how many hours do you have? So multiply let's say 30 with 24. So the load factor would come out to be uh, I will tell you from here. These would be 720 hours, okay? So this is 0 0.2569. 0 0.25 or 25%. Yes, yes. So I believe I finished this video over here because it would get boring then. I hope you have understood the basic idea of what the basic idea of the things connected load maximum demand demand factor average load and load factor that we have seen if we have more uh, uh, basic definitions we'll see it in the next videos i am here i'm not going anywhere right yes so see in the next video with what with examples till then take care goodbye